Hey guys, it's Elvis here at the Veterans Finest, getting you all a deck profile from the Ohio Spring Fest 2016 uh, at the Origins Game Fair. I wound up playing Nova Grapplers for my team in CA. Uh, my friend Albert, the same guy Albert who's been on this channel for the Shadow Deck Profiles, was seat B with great nature this time. And then our seat C, which I honestly got, I can't remember the dude's name, I'm sorry, but I, I mean, I just went on that day and I was extremely tired. I didn't even sleep that night. Uh, was on seat C with the leader. Uh, we wound up making it up to the fifth round. I personally went 4-1. Uh, the tournament was six rounds, so unfortunately we were really short of the invite this time. But, you know, things happen. Uh, I played an identical build to the last few builds I've been playing of Nova Grappler, but uh, I've been testing this build a bit more. I really like it. I think it's a really solid list. Can't say there was a lot I would change about the main board. There were some ideas I wanted to test beforehand, but due to limited card access, I just couldn't. And just because of the limited time, I didn't have access like, to try them even though we thought about them. Uh, I was debating between this and Aqua Force, But I wanted to design just to play this. Uh, I We just kind of thought that because of Kagero, we weren't sure how that was going to work out. Plus, we were also worried about Angel Feather. And excuse me, I'm just really tired, so I'm out of breath. Uh, Angel Feather was a really big consideration considering the instant you like play Aqua Force against Angel Feather, like... When they start popping their vanguard, your rear guards mean a lot less to them. Excuse me. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, I played Nova Grappler uh, over Aqua Force because of that decision. And it would have been Blue Wave Aqua Force, by the way, uh, just so that was clear. Um, I don't remember the rounds in order, and there is one matchup I'm missing. I lost to Libs, which were also attacking Ezel well Scissors, which was uh, our last round, round five. Uh, those guys were cool. They actually wound up winning the entire thing. So shout outs to you guys. You did awesome. Proud of you guys. Go Libs. Go Neo Nectar. And go Night Rose. And yes, uh, also the Neo Nectar was Bloom Asha. But yeah, go you three. Go Night Rose. Go Asha. Go Libs. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I played against Link Joker Messiah. That was. It was a bit difficult, but I wound up winning that. Uh, that was. I know that was round one. Uh, I know I played against Beast Deity. I, play, I played against BZD and Tribrew when do the match. Like, any Nova Mirror match, if you just go Tribrew, you win. Uh, yeah, and, like, Tribrew just controls so many other decks. Uh, I played against Shadow Witches, which actually I almost lost to. That was a really close one. And then, um... I can't rem yeah, I, I can't remember. Like, I went through, like, every clan and tried to think of whatever it was, but I couldn't. If you do remember... Who, what, or like, what, if you put against me and like, you're randomly watching this, uh, please let me know because I actually would like to remember what I played against uh, just for future reference. But we're going to get started in this deck profile. And yeah, uh, so yeah, it was an overgrappler and that was just like the be base pick. So, so many Vanguard was Rumble. I still feel Rumble is the best starter in the clan. Uh, I mean, this card just restands for no reason. Don't know why you wouldn't play Rumble. It makes it so you have to commit to board less. It gives you columns for rushing early game, especially with this card. Uh, I rushed with this as a column all throughout the day. Like, I just never stopped doing it. Uh, they usually swung at it, though. And I was actually kind of surprised to see how many play people swung at my rear guards today. Like, it was so common to have people swing at your rear guards, and I was not expecting it. Because, I mean, not to say that this community is bad, but, like, a lot of people just don't do it for some reason. So, when I had rear guards swung at me, I was surprised. But I usually just let like, them kill my rear guards because I knew I could just pressure them back. Uh, and I also played 4 Red Lightning, uh, the critical trigger. Uh, unflipping actually came up a lot, especially in my Shadow Witch matchup. Uh, I kept hitting break passes and this off of the Witch skills that I kept like, putting away my dudes. So I got like just free stuff out of it like the entire game. It was fantastic. I, I loved it. Like I almost wanted to say it was fun because of them that I won that matchup. Like, just giving me cards like that. Uh, for draw, uh, I know some people are going to question, like, draws over stands. Uh, you want to dig into combo pieces, and you arguably could play cards like Subliminal Gray. I actually like that same trigger a lot. For people who don't know, it's Soul Blast 1, put it on bottom, the card on bottom of the deck, draw a card. But I just felt that because of how Soul worked in this deck, you don't generate a lot of it, but you need it. And I only played the four, I played the four draw. I like the referee trigger because it does turn anything into a combo piece, which is something that I admit I would have liked access to. 
but at the same time, I just felt like getting the extra shield, getting the extra card, making the drive check better, because if you drive check a standing victor, it really is worthless, considering everything should be standing in battle phase anyway, so there's that. And then four heals. I mean, you should have been playing these before, but now we have definitely a reason to play heals. Uh, for the grade ones, we played four PGG. Uh, I think the other one's just garbage. Uh, vanillas are the vanilla PGs are okay, but I don't know why you would play the extreme battler one. I think it headstrong. I think is his name. Just don't play that card. Uh, four stride fodder. I actually use this as a surge victor a lot. This card was actually he also helpful in the early game rush because if I had like two Dan Shark, which yes, my alternate grade was Dan Shark, I could just like correct, and it helped out a lot. Uh, four Malayaki. I wanted to see this card more. I wish I could play like, more of this card. This card is fantastic, but I like never saw it from my back row. I always had to ride one. And I kept damage checking like three. So what can you do about that? I never got to do like the hundred. I think I did the hundred k victor turn once. It's just just because I kept missing pieces for it. Especially because I kept missing Zazandas. And then my two one ofs, which I am toying around with. I played one energy charger and one Kumar the destroyer. Kumar is fantastic. Oh my goodness, I actually love this card. Kumar, Kumar. Oh my god, Kumar. Like, this card, I admit I hated this card at first. I am stupid for not loving this card more. Kumar is a fantastic card. It is the fifth Sazanda of the deck. I honestly got almost wish I... I'm even debating about dropping Energy Charger to play too. But I do still like at the same time how Energy Charger just fetches you another card. Which is the only reason I'm keeping Energy Charger. Part of me wanted to play Double Energy Charger before the event. But now I'm almost debating about Double Kumar. Like, sure, Kumar doesn't... Only like gets that power if you swing at rear or at vanguard. But at the same time, you shouldn't really be swinging at rear guard when your vanguard is like that big, unless you're trying to like counter boss denial them. Or it's like, well, that's mainly like you just want to like deny them that extra counter boss. But point being, Kumar was fantastic. And then for the twos, uh, best two in the deck, Sazanda. Like this card is fantastic. Just restanding for ten every time. Like you get in there really fast. This card just applies so much pressure. Uh, and then the best ride target of the deck for Hank. I just wanted to ride this all day. I didn't want to ride anything else, like, ever. Especially since my last twos were two one-ofs. Uh, I played two Arboreal. I wanted to play three, but I just couldn't find room because I also wanted to play double Hedgehog. Uh, this card is actually really good considering it did push me ahead in certain matchups. Drawing that extra card does help. Getting the free unflip helps. If you go for the tribute play, it actually like, it just makes it even more free. Like you just get so much advantage of it because you retire one to two, you unflip, which account you unflip me a counter bus that you're gonna burn anyways for Victor to restand it, and you just draw a card. So why not? And Arboreal uh, versus Hank, I know is kind of a debate. Uh, originally we like for a while we thought about going uh, four Hank t or three Hank three Arboreal. But the only issue we had with it was just, like, we didn't get testing in time for it. So we couldn't, like, completely vouch for it. Since, uh, I hadn't, I have had no chance to play test against Kagero post the Legend deck. So, for all I knew, Arbor, like, we assumed that Arbor was going to be better in the control matchup. But at the same time, I just found myself wanting more, like, cards worth restanding. I'm even debating about cutting a Hank just to play a Golden Anglet. Just so I can play that six Sazanda. Because if I have so many restands, I might as well play more re cards I want to restand. But as for the threes, the alternate grade three, as I said earlier in the deck profile, was three copies of Extreme Battle or Dan Shark. Now, I am going to talk about why I play Dan Shark over cards like Crystal Devil or otherwise. Um, in my opinion, I don't like any other cards that I can ride. Uh, like, Crystal Devil's okay. I admit I considered it. I hated Muscle Shriek in all my playtesting with that card. I was about ready to rip my copies of it. Even post GBTO 6. Yeah, this card came out and said 6. Yeah, it says 6. I don't know why it took me a while to think of that. Um, the only other card... I used to play Victor Mega Player. That's what I played in Chicago last year. The only other card I was debating about running, and I wanted to playtest it but just didn't have time to ignore the card itself, was uh, Galaxy Blaugluger. Because the logic that I had behind playing Galaxy was if you have to ride Galaxy, you at least have a Vanguard that has on-hit pressure. Not to mention you can generally give rear guards uh, on-hit pressure too, so the opponent just doesn't want you hitting. So by the end of it, I just felt like, alright, well, since ev riding everything sucks anyways, I might as well go for the best card to call the rear guard, which is Dane Shark. And Dane Shark can technically get you a plus. You have three other targets for it if you ride one, but... 
you realize that they're not ever going to get that skill off, but still, I liked Dan Shark. The fact that it makes an 11k call by itself is also extremely relevant, and I did that throughout the entire day. Like, I had it at 16, 21, just making numbers with the card. Like, it was fantastic. I love Dan Shark. I'm actually getting SPs tonight. <laughs> we in there, boys. And then for Victor, I actually didn't, I actually got to ride this whole tournament. Um, there was my last round, which, un which really sucked, but uh, I had to G assist into it. And I missed the first G assist when my opponent was at three. Thankfully, he didn't seem like he was playing Sabreeze, so that helped out a lot. But still, uh, I mean, Victor gets in there. This card is just fantastic. I absolutely love Victor. Like, Victor does what Victor does. And that is it for the main deck, obvious 50. Uh, and then the G zone, which I will talk about. Um, I played four G Guardians. I played one Blue Prism. Blue Prism was actually a lot better than I gave this card credit for. It actually wound up saving me over the fact that I played two Dismal. I don't know if I would change the G Guardian lineup per se for that. And I guess just so we have it here, uh, one screw you. Uh, Prison giving that extra 5k matters. I wish we just had a better G Guardian that gave like 5k easier. I don't know exactly what I would want. I don't know, like three or more damage. Like, I mean, I know it's more or less what the Angel Feather Fighters collection one was. I also got to wish we had theirs, but. Having that extra 5k really mattered. Like, I found myself just wanting, like, 5k all day. And usually if I had to burn a G Guardian, I just burnt a Dismal. Like, I barely ever burnt the Blue Prison, because I found Blue Prison invaluable. I burnt Blue Prison in my round 1 matchup. And then after that, I just found myself, like, saving the Blue Prison and just burning the Dismals. And then Screw You was just Screw You. The card was actually a lifesaver. Uh, for the other G units, I played two Krays. I played one Sabreeze, and I actually played one Blizza. So, I know some people are going to be like, why are you playing these? Or at least why I play the Blizza. Uh, Blizza was not here for the reason of flip, like late a late game stride, a flip something, tons of power. No, I think that logic is absolute garbage. I played this to either G assist, which I did G assist this out, or to enable GB2 faster. Enabling GB2 was actually crucial in a few matchups. Because I couldn't stride a few turns afterwards. So, blows up, flips a breeze. Congratulations, free GB2. I didn't have to waste a Victor Strider or anything. It just went off, and I couldn't have G guarded the turn after. Or G guarded the turn before or after, so. Blizza came up. Uh, I never subbreezed anybody, and nobody ever subbreezed me. I don't. I didn't even see subbreeze drop, like, all day. So, I'm, I still would play the card, but I don't think the card is, like, a life or death situation. And we had, like, discussions at the venue about, like, is the grade 2 game dead? No, it's not dead, but it is significantly weaker because of the card. And I wouldn't even attempt to do it because of, like, play the grade 2 game in certain matchups because of the card. Uh, I actually also played two copies of Meteor Kaiser Tribrute. I have been a big fan of this card for the longest, like, since its release. Oh, my God, Tribrute's my baby. Tribrute came through for me so much. Actually, these last uh, 10 strides technically did come through for me. Uh, Tribrute was one of them, like... Tribute is so good. It won me my Beast DD matchup. It won me like a bunch of other matchups. It helped in the Messiah or the Link Joker Messiah matchup because I could just get to retire his back row. And he was like, Well, I can't do anything now because you just kept killing all my boosters. So he had like nothing for that. And then the cards that mattered, which I know people are going to be like, Wait, you're not playing this card. I ran four copies of Victoplasma. And then my last four were four copies of Medio Kaiser Victor. So I know a bunch of people are going to talk about why did you not run Bustard. Simply put, I hate Bustard. I think Bustard is terrible. Now the reason I say that is I'm first all going to like say a pro about the card that I admit kind of makes me wish I played Bustard was that over Blizza, it is technically the best turn one in stride. It guarantees you a restand because you can go tr uh, Bustard with Bustard. You have the power. Well, no, you don't have power, but. You have the GB2 enabled. You have the guaranteed restand. If you if you flipped over to Zonda, congratulations. If you didn't, oh well. But I admit, Burster what is technically the better card in that sense. It's the best first stride. And sure, on paper, a late game, it's technically stronger than either Victor or Victor Plasma. In execution, however, I absolutely hate this card. The reason I say that is because of a few that is because of certain bits of logic. First off, I never found myself with the full board all day. So I could never... I, I never once had a full board in this entire day. And I didn't want to have a full board. Because if I did have a full board, I would have lost. 
Now, Burster does give you a resetting Vanguard. Technically, a cheaper cost to resand it, because I believe it's just discard one and CB2. And then you just get to go off because you reset all your, your you, ah, you reset your entire board too. However, one burster doesn't help you gain power in the columns considering it doesn't resand everything at plus five. And two, which is the bigger part, the instant you play against any control matchup, this card just becomes garbage. Like if you play against Link Joker or Kagero, Narukami or even Shadows, like you're not gonna resolve bust or burstered. You know, is it buster? Bustard, excuse me, I kept saying Bustard because weird translations I kept reading everywhere, so I kept forgetting the card's actual name. Like, in my Messiah matchup, if I had played Vict like Bustard over Victoplasma, I would have lost, because I would not have been able to reset my Vanguard and apply the pressure I did. In most of my other matchups, if I played Bustard over more Victors, I still would have lost. And had I not played Tribrute over, like, played Bustards over Tribrutes, then I wouldn't have been able to control a lot of matchups that wound up winning me in the game because I had that retire factor. Or the fact that if I had not played Blizza, well, I guess argument over Blizza, but still. Like, Bustard Flip, Sabreeze, that's not strong. And would I really want to go Bustard Flip, Buzz? Like, I guess you could cut one Tribrute for, and Blizza for two Bustard, but still, like, why would you only play two at that point? It's not worth it. You might as well just, like, try and play a third somewhere, but it's, like, no, I didn't want to do it. Bustard is a good card. And I like it in other Nova decks, but in Victor, I do not like this card. Or if your local area doesn't have a lot of control, then by all means play this card. But I do not like this card at all. So that was my logic with playing the 4 Victor, four Victor and 4 Victor Plasma. They came through. They were fantastic. I love these cards. Like, if it wasn't for them, I definitely would have been boned all day. But I think that is the deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did... Please be sure to give me some feedback. It always helps. It lets me know what you guys like and dislike. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I am sad that we didn't get our top. We were so close, but you know, it happens. Especially when you have the leaders as your third teammate instead of the guy that you were originally planning on having. Our third teammate did get a bit of an incident, and thank God he's okay for it. But still, it does kind of suck that it happened. But I figured... Hey, we still got to go to Origins. We had fun. We got stuff. I would call this worth. I called the entire trip worth. I got to hang out with my friends. I got to see people. Met some people. And yeah, I liked it. Got to see how far I can go. Going for a one and being the best teammate was actually pretty fun. And proud of myself for that. So I am confident about regionals this year. Uh, I'm going to be practicing. Going to be getting you guys some other deck profiles for post the G Zone expansion. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be before or after the vlog. Probably... No, this will probably be after. Uh, I will be getting Albert's Great Nature. Uh, getting you guys with the Vanguard deck profile, like I said. And, yeah, I think that's actually going to do it. So, until next time, guys, peace.